So when you hear the word exorcism, what comes to mind? You can just say it. The movie. The movie. Okay, the movie. Uh, floating bed. Yeah. Say it loud. I mean, cleansing. cleansing. Okay, cleansing. Good one. Okay. So um, for me, it is. It, I, for me, I think of the movie, the, I, the Exorcist, and there are people who have asked me, have, "Have you ever performed an exorcism?" What people t don't tend to know is that exorcism is actually a part of baptism. You've seen, probably seen, multiple exorcisms. That, that's your trivia for the day. It's part of, it. if you remember like when we baptize a child up here, there's a little phrase that I'll say. I'll say, we pray that sin and evil have no power over this one. That's an exorcism. That is a, what's considered a minor exorcism over the one who's about to be baptized. Now, it is considered a minor exorcism, and it's a practice that has been around for a long time. So if you want to hear about my experience with the greater rite of exorcism, that's a conversation for another day. But if you want to go back in time and there, think about how that little line that we say in our baptism, how it used to be part of a much bigger process. Long before anybody was, had even thought about baptizing infants, a person, when they came to be baptized with water, they, there was a whole process. It would last almost a whole day. And part of that process was is that they would be washed with this coarse kind of gritty oil. And it was kind of a cleansing thing. And so that word cleansing, absolutely. It was to cleanse the person, exfoliate them, and get them ready for back, baptism. Now, the idea was is that you would clean off where you had been, the dirt, and prepare yourself to be clean to come before God in baptism, to move into new life, clean. Now, we've just streamlined all of that. I've never washed anybody with gritty oil. That, is, that has never been part of baptism for me. But there's a history there, and it's one that's worth remembering. Because it's all a part of this process of baptism to leave behind, to let go of the life that you had lived before and prepare for new life as a disciple of Christ. But letting go can be really, really difficult. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus. Turning to them, Jesus said, whoever comes to me and doesn't hate father and mother, brother and sister, spouse, and children, and who doesn't carry their own cross, cannot be my disciple. If you were to decide to build a tower, wouldn't you sit down first and calculate the cost of the tower? Otherwise, when you laid the foundation, you might not have the money to finish it. And some of the people working on this building know exactly how uncomfortable that is. <laughs> but what the Bible says is, here's a person who began construction and couldn't complete it. Or what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down and finding out if his 10,000 soldiers could go against the 20,000 coming against him. And if he didn't think he could win, he would send a representative off to try and negotiate a peaceful solution. In the, some way, in the same way, none of you who are unwilling to give up all your possessions can be my disciple. In the past few weeks, I'm aware that just in this small church community of, of ours, we have over a dozen people who are in the process of moving, of physically moving from one place to another. And you think about that, that is a, a lot of people to be moving at one particular time. And every one of them that I've talked to has commented about 
what it is to leave something behind, leave a place behind where you've lived. You live in the same house for 40 years, and you've got stuff, and it isn't just your possessions. It's the memories. It's a life. It's a process to leave, and it can be really difficult. Before you can move forward in your life, whether you're moving physically someplace or you're graduating, think about the graduates that are graduating this month, or dating again after a broken relationship. Before you can move on in a healthy way, you have to be willing to give up, to let go, to leave behind what you once had. Right now, I'm thinking about the dozens of people, the dozen people in, our, in this little church community who are going through that in some way. I'm thinking about those whose relationships ended. Some by death. Some by divorce. Some are going through a breakup. And every one of them, every one of them, is wondering what the future will hold. Is there light and love left for me? And I'm thinking about those people who are physically moving right now and how many of those I've talked to. And they're moving from places that maybe they watched their kids grow up in the place that they were living or they, it was a place that their grandkids would come. Or maybe it's giving up most of their possessions and wondering what this new life they're moving into will be like without them. And I'm thinking too, I'm thinking about those people who are graduating this month, who are going through the exciting but really daunting process of going off to higher education or moving off on your own or leaving families and friends to whatever is going to come next. And just like Jesus says, Every single person, every single person who is having to make some kind of move or change like this in their life, they are considering the risks, right? What are the costs in taking this next step? They're asking, do I have enough to make it? Can I pay my rent? Are you going to be okay? Okay. Is leaving behind what you had worth it? Now, back in the day, the process of baptism, it often meant leaving behind the traditions. So if you were baptized, sometimes it didn't necessarily, you were baptized into a new faith, which sometimes meant you were leaving the faith of your, of your ancestors, of your family. Maybe you were even leaving the support of your family. And that's what Jesus is getting at when he talks about all that hating your family stuff, all that, lang all that language. It's being willing to let go. Let go of whatever or whomever holds you back from moving your life forward. <clears throat> that's hard. And, and sometimes you've even got to find some discontent. You've got to... Uh, Sometimes you need even to renounce what you've known before in order to take that new step. Now, so for those who are graduating in the near, near future, there is a natural behavior that I've become aware of called soiling the nest. And I learned this morning from one of our HR people is this is also a thing in jobs. People will soil the nest to express their discontent with their current situation in order to have the energy to take the step into new life, into what's next. And it's no fun for anyone. I know that. So exorcism. It's part of the process of letting go. Because before you can leave and move forward, you need to let go. In this Easter season, we've been working on downstairs the lower level, and it's coming, it's coming along down, down there. And we've been exploring in this series what it means to build church, and we've been doing that through the lens of baptism. To be baptized into Christ's church, 
one must first let go or exercise whatever holds you back from moving forward into new life. With endurance, let us also run the race that is laid in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith pioneer and perfecter. Learning to let go, to throw off any extra baggage, to get rid of the sin that trips us up, is all the part of the continuing journey of the baptized. Because it's easy to get caught in a moment. I, I love, it's a U2 song I love. It's easy to get caught in a moment, in the comforts of a moment, thinking that somehow you're not getting any older. That things will remain as they are. But change, it's part of life. Because we're prone to wander to lose sight of the full and abundant life that is meant. So we fix our eyes on Jesus and that vision that Jesus had, that plan for the next step. Hold on to, the day, um, to these words in the days ahead when you may feel discouraged. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. Baptism meant letting go. It meant exercising all that could hold you back for the future. Baptism also empowers you to use your new life the days that are coming in ways that extend the Christ values of, of mercy, of nonviolence, compassion, inclusivity, and justice. All things our world needs a lot more of, more of right now. And I, I know that many of you who are at one of those points of change right now in your life, where you're at that point of change, you're, maybe it's graduation, maybe you're moving, Maybe it's relationships that are changing. I know that many of us, I know that that's common right now in this church community. And I hope, my hope for you, is that the continuing journey of baptism can help you let go, which you need to release. And I hope that you will go to God constantly in prayer keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus and the vision of a life that God wants for you. And I hope that you feel in the core of your being that in this community, no matter what, you are always welcome here. You are at home, even if this is your first day here. Will you... Pray with me. For all those who are in the midst of life changes right now, God, may your guiding Holy Spirit be with them. For those of us who are reclaiming daily the hope of our baptism to help us let go of that extra weight that is holding us back. And for this church community, may we always show your inclusivity and justice. We pray this by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Amen.